Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 17 of our FTP Skies X-Room Load Let's Play. Today guys, we want to finish the bees because it has stopped raining, so hopefully some of our bees have consumed or converted into any tolerance weather, as well as hopefully enough are metaternal that I can squish them and get some bee juice. Now I've made a few upgrades over here. I have added an advanced item collector here with a sturdy bee cage as its whitelist. And I have an advanced item collector here with the blacklist for sturdy bee cages. So this one will only pick up sturdy bee cages. This one should only pick up bee jeans. Now you could whitelist this to bee jeans, but I don't believe it works. So that's why I have it like this. I've added speed upgrades in all of these machines as well. They're pretty easy to make. It just requires some clocks, some comb blocks, which is just four combs, and then the upgrade bases we made in the other episode. Now, I've also added a phytogenic insulator just to make some poppies. And this thing's just chugging away making poppies. And well, that's how you breed bees and then over here i got sturdy bee cages by trading up through the beekeeper which is just an advanced beehive inside of uh with a villager and you use lumium coins and bee cages and you get lumium coins from trading lumium with a wandering trader and then over here it's just a filter we'll get all of the filters going once i squish the bees and this one is just for productivity very high and we'll get the other two in just a second here so I do have some bee cages on me. So let's hope some of our bees are metaternal or whatnot. Do I have two more? Oh, wow. I had the perfect amount of... Oh, no, I don't. I'm missing one. Well, not a big deal. I'm going to go squish all of these guys. Actually, I should check before I do it. Uh, metaternal, weather tolerance, any weather tolerance, rain, metaternal, rain, diurnal, rain, metaternal, uh, weather tolerance, none, metaternal, weather tolerance, any rain, any... Oh, I have two any's. Rain and none. Okay, that should be enough. Should. <laughs> Let's hope. So if I squish these guys, I'll just throw them all in here. And the bee cages should get picked up eventually in here. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, they do. Okay, nice. Cool. But it only can stack up to 16, so that makes sense. I should probably do it into a drawer. That's probably better. Just so there's a buffer. And then I probably got to delete the stingers. So there's not just items on the ground as well. But... That should be a bunch of bee jeans, and if I flick that on, hopefully we get some good jeans here. Oh, and side note, I have made myself Faraday armor. This is from Immersive Engineering. It is just aluminum plates and just the regular armor recipe, and this allows me to run into wires without getting killed. I should have made this a long time ago, considering I have so many wires around the base, but we have it now, so hopefully I don't just die every time I'm in my base. We have two Metaternals. And we only have one weather tolerance any at 29%, really. That is unfortunate. Oof. Okay. Well, I probably shouldn't have squished all my bees. But that's fine for now. We will get some more bees down on the ground. I will add this in here. New filter, item stack. Then just click that in, save. And then these will get taken out. Watch. There you go. But yeah, weather tolerance any 29%. You know what? I probably processed the bees too fast in here. In the power centrifuge i probably should have waited done one at a time because it can only suck items out so fast that it probably got clogged up and items got lost which is unfortunate i probably should have paid attention more because i should have had enough bees hopefully this last bee over here is weather tolerance oh i still have one on me oh he's not at all what i need though is this guy good and weather tolerance none that's unfortunate okay well we'll probably do weather tolerance none we have rain shields anyway, so I think it should be fine realistically. But that is typically how you're supposed to make bees uh, with the weather tolerance any, sorry. However, like I said, I do have rain shields all over my base. So in all honesty, it should be fine and I shouldn't have to worry. And then these guys are picking up the cages. Perfect. So I'll put 16 cages in here total. It should never run out because 16 will loop infinitely. And then these guys will breed and breed and breed. Okay, awesome. So we're going to make ourselves two perfect bees. So that's why we have two metaternal and two very highs. So I have been collecting some more bees and I have put speed upgrades in all of these guys as well. So I'll collect the honey and such we've made while I base AFK and we'll make some more honey treats, which should allow plenty of bees. 12. I know I made some earlier, right? Yeah, I made a bunch earlier. Okay. So we'll make two honey treats with gene samples that and this, eternal and very high. And we'll grab two quartz bees. I think those are probably the best. Wait, quartzite bee? What bees did I have? Ghostly, crystalline, that's the one. 
So if we place two of these down, grab two bee cages, and give you a honey tree to pick them up, as you see. Ooh, important foundations. What's that? Catch a crystalline bee from the nether. Cool. Oh, and I got some more achievements here. I'll show you in just a second. Um, I made an infuser for our osmium production. So that's really cool. Now, if I take both my perfect bees, so very high metaternal and very high metaternal, these will always consistently make a metaternal very high bee. So if I just speed this guy up, just for show, and then we'll let this guy passively work in the background. Do eight times the speed, should be fine. You know what? 16 times, so why not? So very high metaternal every time. Oh, I don't have something to suck this out. Very high metaternal, and this will happen, the, exa the exact same bee will be reproduced every time without fail because both parents have very high and metaternal. And I think they have exactly the same. Yeah, they have none weak and normal. So yeah, it's always going to be the exact same bee no matter what. So that's really cool. This guy here, if we put in the bee incubation chamber with some honey treats, they will use the honey treats to grow up. And it seemed to only use two just now, which is definitely a change by the devs because that is not normal. But we'll grab some more logistical transporters and we'll set it up so it can actually be transferred. Okay, and that should automatically pull the bees out. And then I need one logistical transporter right here to pull them upwards and there we go and that should have gone right back in maybe i have nine seven yes i do have all 16 perfect so now i just need something to honey treat uh build i just need to put a uh, i guess a drawer down here uh with honey treats in them and then this guy for some reason by the way i don't know why exactly but it doesn't work with the pusher upgrade into the breeding chamber which is kind of annoying so I did have to add the logistical transporters there. But yeah, we just have poppies going in permanently. And then we'll set a honey tree thing, which we'll have to make manually for now until we get AE2. But these guys seem to be working pretty good. And we should be getting Metaternal in here eventually. If I flick this, maybe? Where's our Metaternal? It's at 50% at the moment. And then productivity should be coming eventually, maybe? Very high is at 69. Okay. So we have a 69% and 50%, and eventually these will fill up, and we'll have plenty to use over time, as long as I have honey treats to fill, form them. And that is why I've set these guys up, so I can make honey treats oh, plenty. And there we go, I just threw some honey treats in there, they will automatically be put into there, and we have a miniature automated breeding setup that will produce as metaternal and very high. And like I said, as we do have the rain shields which i will reinstall so we don't get rain anymore we should have infinite well be infinite to best bees at this point however it will take a while for us to get enough honey treats to the point where we have enough bees i also don't think that's where the rain shield was i think it was over here so i'll add it in the center which should be that block there we go good enough awesome and i also do want to get a new source method maybe this episode we'll see because our mob farm is not automatic and well it is automatic but it's like not the best and you can get a much better source source <laughs> with phytogenic insulators and using blazing or twin logs so we might set that up today we'll see however i do really want to progress in the quest line and move into printed silicon and getting quartz done and also hopefully work towards getting entangled blocks set up so we can make a lot of these setups a lot cleaner today because that would help also would help with the osmium automation but yeah as you see i've made enriched diamonds which is basically just putting a single diamond in an enriching chamber i also made these all basic tier installers and as you see 34 went down to 11 and filled this guy up rather than one diamond dust it does i don't actually know how much it does it does 80 so one diamond does 80 rather than one diamond doing 10 so yeah i highly recommend making an enriching chamber they're pretty easy to make if i look it up it is just some steel plates, a steel casing, which does require the osmium, so you have to make the osmium. So I made one osmium, electron tubes, and then the basic circuits that we made before, the logic and the mineral. And then, yeah, so we have osmium here, we have platinum, and we have platinum dust here, pulverizer, iosmium. It's pretty simple, but we only have 37 more osmium dust. I also put my dash back in, and we've been making a decent amount of dash, to say the least. There should be none left up top, and the power is not doing too bad on the back end, and it's going pretty well. But yeah, I did have to move the dash out to make the osmium, because the osmium requires the burning air to make. So if you look at the recipe, it is burning air and osmium in the, in the arc furnace. However, for now, what we're going to do is continue on and make the chemical oxidizer, because that is the next thing that wants us to do. So if we make the chemical oxidizer here, 
just a simple recipe, personalized barrel, chem tank, the control circuits and fuse alloys. And with this guy, what we want to do is I believe it's making salt, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's making printed silicon, right? So we want to make chlorine gas. And to get chlorine gas, what you need is an electrolytic separator with brine, and you'll get sodium and chlorine. Brine is from a thermal evaporation plant, and I'm not entirely sure what you need a chemical organizer for. Oh, this will give you brine. However, you can also make brine uh, without this guy. So this is just for the quest itself. I will be making brine with thermal evaporation plant. These are just very efficient. They require some circuit black planes, the thermal evaporation block, which is compressed iron plates, dielectric paste, and copper plates. Right. Okay, so I know what we have to do next. I was jumping the gun a slight bit. However, we need to get ourselves into oil. So that is this process line just down here. And this isn't too bad. Now, it's not the best. Ooh, check mark. Cool. Free XP. So yeah, we technically could do this by using salt to get brine. However, we're going to need kerosene to make our wireless power and also to make energizing orbs, which require for progression into applied energistics. So there's a few things I actually want to do because of this. So the first thing is grabbing some Certus Quartz dust. So we'll grab three stacks and we'll throw all this in our enriching factory. Now what this does is this will make Certus Quartz crystals. And then with the crystals, I can make blocks and turn the blocks into budding blocks with our golems over here. So what I'll do is I'll replace all the amethysts. I had to clear this out earlier because that's what I wanted to do. And I'm just going to chuck in there. I have 8.8 thousand. .8, but I'm going to replace all of these budding blocks with certus budding blocks with certus blocks. And I remember the recipe for this guy is really weird. If you look it up, you have to use a multi-server press with the packing mold. So we'll make one of those and we'll make five blocks and then our amethyst golems over here will farm our certus quartz crystals infinitely so we won't have to ever worry about those because as you see they make so much amethyst they will make the same amount of uh certus quartz which is really nice however to do that i need certus quartz blocks and we need a multi-server press which we should have below and i will get myself which one is it it is the metal press mold so come over to our engineer's blueprint throw the mold press in that in wires and we'll grab the packing mold and we shouldn't need any more molds in the future but that's that get that rid of that and we want five blocks perfect so i believe the packer is down here correct or the multi-server press sorry is it not wait where's the multi-server press i know i have one. Oh, you know what it's right beside this machine yeah it's right here duh oh and i also had some electron plates going however these guys will make some search quartz blocks i need five of them and if I come over here and destroy these guys, since I have Silk Touch, I will keep the budding amethyst, which is really nice. So I can always replace these if I want. However, if I go ahead and place one of these guys down, it should turn into a budding block. He's working. He's working. Come on. And it's quite annoying because you do have to place the budding blocks down each time. I don't believe they'll do more than one at a time. So I had to break this budding block and then reassign it to them i believe i might be incorrect or i might have to reassign the soldiers themselves because they should turn this immediately so if i place that down maybe you'll turn the block mm. i'll come back to you once this is done okay there we go so what i did is i humanely removed my amethyst golem from existence and then i just right clicked them and shift right clicked and set that as his home and then started growing immediately so i might be able to do that with this guy let's see if he turns it into a block maybe maybe it looks like they want to turn it into block bingo okay so it does turn into a block nice so we'll place all of these guys down and we will have infinite certus quartz crystals permanently being farmed by our minions here so i'll let those guys do their job and we'll check in on them i don't know in an episode to see how much certus quartz they've produced however i do need to make the fluid lasers and this requires a bit of stuff however it should be all doable. I don't believe I need an advanced one. Oh, I do need an advanced one, which means we just need to make pink slime. So the first thing we need is a machine called the Mob Slaughter Factory. Now what this guy does is it basically just kills mobs. <laughs> very, very simple. So we can go ahead and remove our Reaper Generator here. There's a lot of items on the ground. Holy cow. And this guy should be getting power. Oh, wait, no. The power is what there. How am I going to power this thing? I guess I could grab my energy cube for now and just move it over. Because it's not like I'm actually using this energy cube for anything. Oh, I broke a cable. 
How did I? Oh, I broke a block. Oh, that is not good. What block was that? Oh, it's my fluid extractor. Okay, that's not as bad. I thought I broke something important, but that could be fixed easily. However, if I grab my energy cube, I should be able to just remove these guys. Place this down and power it. If I do output on the bottom, that is. This guy should work. You know what? I need a range upgrade. I just realized that will not work without a range upgrade because it only does the block right in front of it, and I'd have to stick it, I guess I could stick it right into the glass, but I think a range upgrade will suffice. And we'll grab add-on extra four. So it's four iron nuggets, glass panes, and redstone dust. I will grab two fluid drawers, if I have any on me. These have stuff in them. I can grab this fluid drawer, actually. Do I have any upgrades left? I do not, unfortunate. Well, oh, we got another wandering trader. Oh, that's huge. I'm going to grab some more coins because I will need to trade with villagers for more stuff, maybe in the future. So do I have signalum? I have 12 signalum and lumium. I know I made some more extra. I don't have endearing yet, so I can't trade with him. However, where did this wandering trader spawn? I do want more coins. Hello, Mr. Excuse me. Coins, please. Thank you. Thank you. And I will grab... I actually don't have Electrum on me. Whoops. Do we have any Electrum? Oh, we do. Okay, we'll grab some Electrum coins and we'll grab a set of Cursed Feed. There we go. Awesome. So now we have extra coins to trade with the villagers, which is nice. And if we come over here to what we were trying to do, we have a fluid drawer with two outputs. And what this will allow is we don't need that anymore, I guess. If we do pink slime and meat, push and push, pink slime and meat should go in here eventually. Maybe once the meat's done. Oh, okay, there we go. Now pink slime's in there too. And we'll lock this guy. Well, lock it. And I will set a void upgrade on it as well. Once we set some upgrades, that is. So if I come over here, I can put a void upgrade and some those and this guy should work infinitely to putting pink slime and liquid meat in here so long as i have this powered but by the time we actually don't need any more pinks well we will need pink slime in the future but i don't think this guy's ever gonna run out of power considering how fast this guy here works and also it doesn't produce any items which is really nice but i believe it still powers the vitalic source link so all we need is power over here and we should be fine and we're not gonna have items clogging up our system anymore Ooh, we got some fancy items. Lapis lazuli. Cool. Anyways, stop being extracted. I need the pink slime, and then we can make our lasers. Okay, that should be most of what I need to prepare for this. I've gone ahead and made gold gears in here as well. And I have the dissolution chamber set up with pink slime. I also have this dissolution chamber set up with lasers. Wait, not lasers. Latex, sorry. So for simple machine frames, you need latex, rubber sheets, steel, duraplast, gold gears, and machine frames. I'm going to do two like this. Whoops. I had this recipe set before, I believe. Wait, which one's only two? Wait a minute. Oh, it's only one gold gear. My bad. And then turd duraplast. Where did my duraplast go? I know I had it. I was making more down here. I have added a bunch of silver down here. Yeah, we have 24. 34, sorry. And then we'll lock that recipe and we'll make a bunch more of those. And to make the advanced machine frame, which we only need the one of for the fluid base, it is netherite scrap, gold ingots, latex, and diamond gears. And I didn't show this off, but I have upgraded all of these to spring align dash meshes. So if I take that off, if I take this off, there we go. So I have upgraded all these to spring align dash meshes, which means I have added netherite scrap to our wall, as well as gas tiers. Those were the only two new products we got, everything else we had before, and these guys are just chugging away by the way. I have, well I can actually just look at my system, it's probably easier. I have 73,000 iron, 57,000 redstone, my diamonds I've been going through quite a bit for the other thing, and then I have a thousand emeralds. So it's going pretty good to say the least, I do need to upgrade the, the things with speed upgrades like I said, but that is a problem for another day, we're not going to be using that many resources at the moment in order we really have the need to do that at the moment. We have other things to progress. However, I needed for this guy, two latex, one simple, two netherite, gold. So two view, one, two, two, and one. And we'll lock that because we will need more in the future. Throw these back in there. And we'll just continue making these till I'm done. As many fluid lasers as I can make. 
And that should be it. Gold gears, pistons, and the black laser lens. So that's glass and a black die, which we have one of, luckily. <laughs> So that made us nine simple machine frames, and that's a decent amount. I do want three more, actually. Then we can have exactly 12 lasers for now, but nine should be fine. Where I don't think it's that big of a problem. I don't really want to go to the hassle of making more of these guys. I guess the quantum assembler can do it easier, but... Oh, it makes four now. Oh, the quantum assembler makes four. Oh, I actually might want to do this then. Wait, quantum assembler. What's this? This isn't the quantum assembler. No, that's the fabrication matrix. I don't have the quantum assembler. What am I saying? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I don't really, I mean, this actually does work now. We can power this thing. But I'm going to procrastinate. We're only going to put nine down. It's not like we have the power. We don't have wireless power anyways at the moment. So it's not like we can do much on that front. However, if I go ahead and make one fluid laser base and then make myself a bunch of fluid drills, should be able to make a stack of pistons. Do I really not have cobblestone? That's crazy. Go ahead and grab a few stacks. Grab pistons. And we'll grab eight laser drills, apparently. What am I missing? Oh, it's a gold, gold, gold gears, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll go make myself four more gold gears, or two more gold gears, and I'll make myself a black laser lens as well. With two more, we can make nine. And if we grab our laser fluid laser base, and we have the drill, I do want some... Do I have any universal cables? I have five. Ech. That's not enough. So, search squares, flux duct, and fused alloy. So, I just want to show this off as I'm doing it. I'm going to grab myself some osmium dust, which we're up to 53 of. Dash is done, so I'll throw osmium and I'll throw the ever-burning air in here. This guy uses much less power than the Dash does. I don't know why Dash is so power hungry, but as you see, this thing's barely going down, and we're going to get ourselves some osmium. However, I do want to go ahead and use this to upgrade our energy cube because you need two osmium ingots to make the advanced energy cube and then further down the line, two, four reinforced alloys, which we can make. So I want to make myself the elite energy cube. I can't make the atomic yet because I need refined obsidian, which requires the... What do I... Why can't I make refined obsidian? It's just metallurgy confused with diamond dust. You know what? I guess I can make the highest tier energy cube. I guess we'll make a high tier energy cube real quick. I say that. However, this should allow us to make a lot more base power. And what will happen is once I can fill this up and bring it to the moon, or I guess to space to mine oil, I will be able to use that. So the reason we have to go to orbit to mine oil, by the way, is if you click U on the black laser lens, it says whitelist of biomes orbit blacklisted none so it only works in orbit and orbit's pretty easy to get to i'll show you once we get into a rocket later in the episode however yeah you do need laser drill in orbit so it does automatically build you a space station you don't need all the dash ingots if you just go into orbit on earth you will automatically get space station there is no need to worry on that end however like i said i want to make myself this guy here which should be pretty easy to make now that we have refined obsidian that is so i could just make a rich obsidian which is this and that is just diamond dust over obsidian dust. And obsidian dust we can get just by crushing it in our crusher. We'll do this real quick. And then, yeah, I have everything else to make it. Just some reinforced alloys, which is infused. And osmium. Easy. Well, we'll have one of these by the... In a few minutes here. So I'm just going to dump this diamond here. Because we're not going to be using it. And I think two should be enough to do four. Yeah, it's exactly enough to do four. Perfect. And we only needed four, right? Yes, we do. Awesome. And then those are just infused alloys. Infused alloys, gold. Infused alloys, osmium. Awesome. So we're going to come back over here and to make ourselves the highest tier energy cube, fill that guy up, which might take a little while. Oh, I need those cables back. Oh, and speaking of which, I could probably can upgrade these cables, no? Yeah. Oh, wait, I need... Whoops. You know what? I didn't think that through, but I do need four of them to make that. So I will go put one more guy in here. And then try again. <laughs> so advanced. And then we'll do... We just gotta get rid of those, right? And then do four of these in gold, I believe it was. Elite and ultimate. So now we have the highest tier storage in a single cube form, that is, until we get an induction matrix, obviously. And if I just stick this guy on here and set the input to top, this guy should fill up with energy slowly but surely. Also, I did upgrade this magnet to the highest tier, which is nice. And that guy will slowly fill up with power. I get rid of those, don't need them anymore. And everything's going good down there on that front. 
and I probably should make some more forest liquid biodiesel soon. But I probably have almost a thousand buckets, I'd say. Maybe less. 917, yeah. We're doing pretty good on forest infused biodiesel. Don't need to worry. 112 buckets over here. Not too shabby. And we have some more asnium we can smelt up and then continue our osmium production. I'm going to take my 13,000 RF. That should be plenty. Or 13 million, right? 12 million. 12.5 million RF should be plenty for now. I will grab my spacesuit out because we are going to space. So we'll throw that on. And I do need a new one for orbit. So I will grab a new scroll. I need a rocket and we'll need some fuel as well. So I should have fuel buckets. Okay, off to space we go for the second time. However, this time we're going to go land in orbit. Now, the reason we're going to orbit is so we can actually mine the oil from space, like I said before. So, similar to when you're landing on the moon, you're just going to hold space, as it says in the chat, and slowly but surely you'll descend into the pre-built space station. And if we just hold space here, it will load in. And look at the beautiful little space station here. Now, eventually, I'm going to fill this guy up with oxygen, and I won't have to wear my spacesuit when I'm here. However, for now, we'll grab our rocket, break that, and I'll just take one of these quadrants off for oil. So we'll do fluid laser base, laser drills, and oil. So we'll do... how about it? So we want, eventually... Is this a 3x3? Three three? Yes, it is. Okay. So eventually... I guess we want three drills like so. Yeah, we'll do three drills like so. I will break this block here. Oh, that wasn't a smart idea. We're going to fall back to Earth. So I forgot I didn't have fly on the moon and or in orbit, I guess. And I may or may not have fallen out of space. Very not, not one of my brightest ideas, to say the least. But we will grab. Luckily, we grabbed our rocket with us. Otherwise, we'd be stranded. However, I'm just going to reorganize my inventory real quick. I really should have set my warp scroll destination before doing that, but I forgot. However, we will go back up to the moon, I guess, which means I need more fuel buckets, but we'll see, catch you guys when I'm back up on the moon. Okay, we're back to orbit, finally. I went kerplunk onto the floor of the Earth. However, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I just want to place my fluid laser base down. All of these guys will find the, the drill. Perfect. And we'll throw the black laser in. So if you look at the uses of black laser lens, you'll see that it requires a minimum of Y20 and a max of Y60 in orbit. So just set the depth here to, well, between Y20 and Y60. I set it to 50. You can set it directly at 60. Not a big deal. Output will push up top and I will get a drawer here in a second. However, I do want to set the scroll so we don't actually have to fly back here. And I will grab my ender pouch and grab my base and I'll be able to travel back and forth. I will hook all of these guys up to power like so. And as you see, this guy is starting to work and it's decently fast. We're getting 200 buckets, 250, 300. And eventually we will have three more lined up here and then we'll have three behind it, three behind it, and then above and below. And you can put uh, a bunch of, a bunch of, bunch of laser drills per base. So eventually you can upgrade this to a really insane size and we'll have plenty of oil. But that is not something that's in the cards right now as, well, we're already empty of power. Well, I guess it's all in the universe cables, but it does use a decent amount of power up. However, we do have oil being made now. So if I go back to my planet, which should fit in here. Ooh, it does. Nice. And with a fluid drawer, what I can do is go back to orbit and just splunk it right down here. And it will automatically get oil. We'll fill it up with plenty of upgrades. I will lock it and I will force load this by clicking M. Well, no, it's not M. But anyways, I'll go in here. No, no, we put major claim chunks, and I will just claim this entire thing. Not a big deal, in my opinion. And we'll force load this area here. So, 94 chunks to force load. We'll do it like so. Anyways, this entire area is force loaded, so this will make oil while we're on our base in the main island, as long as it has power, which it's already out of power. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We got two buckets of oil from all of that. Great. Oh, sorry, my bad. Two buckets and 50 mil buckets. So yeah, this is a main reason why you need wireless power as soon as possible, because otherwise oil systems or producing oil is nine possible <laughs> without doing some silly stuff using like ender drawers and energy tank or energy uh, tablets and have them go inside toward like inside here and then empty out and then come out and then go back in and do a recycling process like that that is absolutely ridiculous so we want to get wireless power in the next episode however we do have oil now what we're going to do with this is 
Well, we can either make oily bees, but I don't really think oily bees are that necessary. Even with our high productivity, I think doing oil this way is going to be much faster. However, with oil, we're going to have to start to make kerosene. And kerosene is made in the refinery with the refinery controller and output, which isn't too bad to make. It is just some dash plates in the thermodynamic plants, and then the refinery is just reinforced stone slabs. So that is something we're going to tackle next episode. We will get kerosene, which will make dialytic paste, and will allow us to make both the casings, which will allow for energized things to move into flux, as well as these ender cores, which will make flux cores, which will make our flux points and flux plugs. And these will allow us to do wireless power to get oil on the, well, oil outside of just the moon, or sorry, I guess power on the in orbit without having to worry. So we'll head back to Earth and I'm going to wrap up the episode here. Now, I know this was a much shorter episode. I didn't have much time today. However, I did want to get an episode out. So we did do finish up our bees. So we now have perfect bees constantly being produced in the back as long as I have honey treats, that is. And we do have oil started. So that is really fun. I have upgraded all of our meshes in the back there. Next episode, we will get a wireless power set up. We will set up our quantum entanglers with uh, our new farm for Avrit Essence as well, and a few more things I have planned out. However, that is it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like on the video. If you learned something or you want to teach me something, leave it in the comments below. If you don't want to miss any more future uploads or anything else in the series, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.